Hello everybody and welcome back to nature. Actually, as you can see in the background, we are near the water and the water we are standing at is a small local river in about a one kilometer hiking distance from my home. And why am I taking you over here today? Well, I have to admit that I was hesitating whether I should take this video or not, but I think it's a good idea and Today I settle uh, to do it and will show you something that I got into recently, which is crayfish catching uh, with crayfish traps. So why was I hesitating about showing you this video? Well, uh, many of you might not like the fact that I'm catching animal and essentially killing them in the end, but um, the procedures that we are taking here are meant to be nature preservation as we're only catching a certain species of crayfish, which is a signal crayfish, um, which is an invasive species over here in Germany and in entire Europe. So we are not taking out all kinds of crayfish, but just two specific species, and one of them is a signal crayfish. And um, basically they carry the crayfish disease and transmit it onto our local species and our local species is uh, not immune to the infection. Well, it's not really an infection, it is spores that uh, get into the system and then there's some fungus uh, growing on them. Um, I will link a description to the crayfish disease in the video description. And for the German viewers, a few words in German, um, wenn es Sie oder euch interessiert, weshalb Signalkrebse in Deutschland gefangen werden, ähm, dann schaut euch bitte die Links in, dem, in der Videobeschreibung an. Dort habe ich einige sehr gute Informationen vom Alfred Wegner Institut zusammengestellt, welches zum Beispiel mit unserem niedersächsischen Labers zusammenarbeitet, was diese Sache angeht. Okay, now back to English. Uh, I will show you how I catch them. I do have four traps outside, which is um, the maximum amount of traps that we are permitted to set up. Um, and uh, essentially, I do use two types. One is a traditional one, and the three other ones are uh, modern ones made of plastic. And uh, you will see them in a moment. So uh, stay tuned and we will see if we caught anything. Catch is not that good anymore the last few days. That's mainly due to the rapidly changing weather conditions with cold rain and heat and cold rain and heat. But um, we're gonna check out if we have anything in the traps or not. Thank you. Okay, so the trap is sitting in the water down there. I see that it has drifted off a bit, which is uh, due to the higher current uh, that we are having on the small river here at the moment uh, due to the rainfalls that we had recently. Uh, so I will have to pull it up, uh, basically uh, pulling on this cord here, and uh, that permits me to take it out. And I also uh, prepared my bucket with water already, because essentially I want to keep it as stress-free as possible for the crayfish when I'm taking them out. And uh, I do respect them as living creatures which you should do as well and um, so that's the bucket with water where I'm gonna toss them into if you caught anything and uh, I set up a second camera so uh, I'm gonna start that right now as well so um, that we essentially uh, get two angles and uh, then we see how that goes and I'm gonna pull out the trap in a moment Okay, so here we go. Usually do this with both hands, but I'm gonna hold the cell phone in one hand and pull up the trap with the other one, which is not precisely how I used to do it. But here we are, that's the trap. I'm gonna grab it in a different way now, which makes it a bit easier. But here you can see the trap and we're gonna check it out if there's anything inside. I do see something but I'm not sure. Nope, nothing 
in this trap as it seems which is okay uh, it was pretty close to the surface due to drifting up so um, that explains why we do not have anything in there I'm just gonna toss it back in and then we will see or better to say I will see if I got something in here tomorrow and I won't be taking you along each day as this indeed might get a bit boring to you so now it's on the ground you can tell by the fact that you can still see it in the water and I'm gonna leave it sitting there just for 24 hours a day I come here daily to check on my traps and now we're gonna continue the hike to the other traps but I won't be filming while hiking but yeah it's a nice overview on the small river and actually the signal and crayfish or crayfish in general like to live inside the vegetation as you can see it over there and uh, on the side I don't have that much of it um, the trap used to be over there and from there I was able to throw it just over to the other bank of the river um, but due to the fact that we do have a trench here um, which now is pretty filled with water uh, after the precipitations that we had um, I have moved it over to here and depending on uh, how the catch develops with the trap here I might even move it further downstream um, we're gonna see that but yeah, no catch in trap number one. Let's continue to trap number three and trap number four. No, it's trap number two and trap number four. Uh, the numbering system is a bit odd, but um, you will in understand in a moment or, or uh, after I explained. So, off to the next traps. Okay, we are over at the next location and actually I do have two traps here. One is down in the water there, you can see it in the water already, like so. And the other one is over there uh, in the vegetation. And we're gonna start with this one. Um, actually this is trap number four. Once in a while I had some lined up, one, two, three, four, but then I changed locations and so the lining up did not work anymore, so uh, I'm gonna get this out of the water and then we check if there's something inside or not. Okay, here we are. Uh, there's nothing inside. Anyhow, uh, this is how the modern fish traps look like. Um, they basically have two funnels where the crayfish can get inside. And then you have a small basket in there. Uh, which is used to keep the bait and um, this is called trappy, made in Sweden and um, if ever you have been wondering why there are the circles on here uh, in Sweden you have a obligation to put in a crayfish uh, after catching them if they are smaller than 10 centimeters getting a mosquito bite for you uh, so um, then you cut this open and you create an opening which uh, permits the smaller crayfish to get out of it again so that's what you do there anyhow no catch on this one either so uh, we gonna put that back into the water and let it sit there for a day again so just toss it in there was enough bait in there, I do know that, because I just refilled it yesterday. So now it's back in the water, you can see it sitting down there. Um, I refilled the bait yesterday, so I know that there's enough in there. And we can walk over to trap number two. This branch is a bit in the way, but 
we can get the screw on it and trap number four is sitting in the vegetation over there and we're gonna see if we caught anything in that one and if that is not the case then we still have our trap number three which is sitting a bit more at a distance so we're gonna see if we got something in here or not uh, it doesn't look too promising I can tell that already and looking at it I have to admit that we had no catch so if you are not patient and you expect to get this uh, trap full every time well, that's not gonna happen in Germany and also you need to be licensed in order to get your crayfish traps out so you can't just go about and set them up and get as much crayfish as you want um, because as I said we do have different species here and you need to be able to determine which species to put back and which species to get out so um, essentially we're gonna toss it back into the water just like so into the plants and now it's time to continue over to trap number three as we had trap number one about uh, 50 meters upstream there's trap number four that is trap number two and we're gonna get out here again uh, on the way I guess we will get a few more mosquito bites and uh, yes and we will head over to trap number three uh, I hope that I do have at least one crayfish in there to show you Okay, here we are at trip number three. As you can tell, we do have a lot more vegetation inside the water here. And you can see my paracord going off that branch and over into the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get it outside of the water without filming with a cell phone. Um, I do have my second camera running as well, so I will just do it through the magic of editing so that you can see the progress of getting in the trap uh, while I'm not holding my cell phone, which looks a bit more professional than doing it with one hand. So yeah, we're gonna get it on the shore and see if we finally caught something or if I will be staying hungry tonight. Okay, at least that is what it should be looking like when getting the trap inside. Uh, there's enough bait in there. There's also a fish head of a fish, a fish that I caught slowly, slowly rotting away in here. But again, we don't have any crayfish. Uh, so unfortunately, I won't be able to show you any crayfish right now. But once we return to my location, I actually can show you crayfish and um, we'll show you a bit what they look like and what it's all about and I do have a ton of footage from earlier times that I went out here and I might be using that as well but I wanted this footage to be rather fresh and therefore I took you along with me today after I made the decision that I do want to publish those videos and 
yeah as you can see today we had no luck that happens and I'm gonna toss this back into the water I'm gonna aim at the other bank of the river um, so that we get it into the vegetation over there which is prime location for crayfish to hang out in and um, then we will have to use a crayfish um, that I caught earlier or earlier videos in order to to show you what it's all about so um, that will be quite a bit of a challenge through editing but I guess I'm gonna get it done and I'm gonna toss this one back into the water and as I said I want to aim for the other side of the river so I need to put some force onto it and that was a bit too much force uh, or to be more precise I wanted to throw it rather low so that you can still see it as the camera is not really pointed upwards but yeah as that did not work out uh, I just gonna change the orientation of the camera a bit like so in order to be able to throw it properly and have you watch at the same time so here's the second take and this one should work out pretty well uh, as I'm not restricted in my movement anymore right now so that should work and I just noticed that one part of the trap had been has come apart a bit so I'm gonna have to work on that first I'm gonna take the paracord into the hand that I'm holding the trap with as you can see it's opening up here because it has a snapping closing mechanism here and if that comes loose we get an issue and it's also no good if the crayfish can walk out of the trap again after they've been inside so consider that fixed now I need to make sure that my paracord does not tangle up while I'm throwing it but that looks pretty decent and I'm gonna use some line in my hand make sure I'm not around the trap with my paracord and now I can just toss it back in don't get scared I'm not going to hit you at least that's what I hope and I'm gonna toss it back over and there we go into the vegetation that's it and now I have to hope for tomorrow uh, that we do have a catch but as I said before I do have plenty of footage that I can show you and uh, basically I think uh, that I can make up something from the footage that I took during the past months and show you crayfish and what the differences are so that will have to be done uh, through editing I can empty the water from my bucket and put it back into my backpack like I said I do not have that much to carry so we go water can stay in nature and here the buckets are quite nice as they are folding ones and like this they are pretty contact uh, to go into my backpack so yeah sorry I wasn't able to show you a live catch um, well some things that we find in the trap while being out here but um, yes that's how it goes and I will have to check the footage that I took already in order to see what kind of stuff I can edit in but um, that's how it goes that's fishing so yeah back to editing yeah and here you have it nice mosquitoes dancing in the sunlight and making me feel like itchy and scratchy in one person so um we are close to the water so that to be expected but yeah i just thought this would make a nice addition to the video so uh, if you appreciate nature as much as i do you might understand why i'm filming this so before i'm returning home i thought this might be a good location to take some more footage uh, and basically I was thinking to myself that after taking you on this trip and on this short hike um, 
you might be having a few questions and so I thought maybe I'd try to come up with some questions and answer them right away and if your question should not have been answered after the end of this video possibly you want to uh, put it into the comments and I will try to answer to it either in a video or by replying directly to the comment. So essentially uh, what kind of questions might come up? First of all, why am I doing this at all? Well, um, I'm a fisherman, I am licensed for the area here for entire lower, lower Saxony and I do have a fishing permit for the bodies of water that I'm taking you to. And um, even so, I do not think uh, that we will uh, win the battle against the signal crayfish. Uh, it is a good way to regulate uh, the number of signal crayfish that we have in our waters and uh, avoid a total extinction of our lo local species. So, coming to the second question that I thought of uh, was um, how do you know if, uh, if you got rid of the signal crayfish? First of all, the signal crayfish would not be a problem if it was not immune to the to the crayfish disease. So, um, if they were getting reduced by a disease, we would not have to get them out. But pretty much, they have no other animal in our waters um, that would reduce them. So, um, as we are taking them out, uh, we reduce their number and uh, we will not get all of them outside. And especially the crayfish disease is hard to get rid of. Uh, if it's one time in your water, you usually have to make it for dry, uh, let it dry for two years and then you can refill it. For a local river that is especially used for of flood regulation that's out of question. So I don't think that we will get our water signal crayfish free, but we may give our local species a bit of an opportunity to survive a bit longer. And um, already the results are from the fishing for crayfish or uh, trapping them over the past few years over here show that they are getting smaller in size, so we don't have that much old animal anymore in our waters. And if you consider the fact that a female signal crayfish can carry up to 400 eggs, um, you understand why uh, it is important to diminish, especially the female population. And right now I'm getting a new mosquito bite on my hand. Um, so uh, uh, that's a bit distracting, but well. Uh, next question, what do I do with the crayfish after I caught them? Well, uh, they are food for me. I do eat them and I treat, treat them with utmost respect as I would uh, treat every living creature. So I try not to stress them too much. I don't try to torture them, but I try to keep them in the best way uh, until they take their hot bath uh, in my cooking pot. and. Um, that means uh, that I do not do anything that could be against our well-being. So I'm very sensitive on that. Oh no, my second hand is getting a bite as well. Nice. Both both thumbs actually. And uh, wait, I'm gonna take care of that quick. There we go. Um, say gone. Oh, there was another one. And yeah, so. I'm taking care of um, keeping them in conditions that are natural to them. And uh, as I told, I don't have that much catch uh, per day. So I need to keep them sometimes for two, three days until I have enough for a meal. And for that purpose, I've constructed a 350 liters basin. That's about a bit less than 100 gallons. Um, over on my property where I keep them at, it's regulated water quality. I do check it every three days. Uh, it has a filtration system. It has uh, cavities where can, they can hide into. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you some footage and images of it uh, right now. So I do keep them until I need to eat them. And uh, I do keep them in a way that is natural to them and that is uh, in no way uh, stressful to them. So. 
um, say I'm hiding in the cavities that I built there, they act naturally and that's something nice to see and it's especially fun or interesting to observe them and monitor their behavior. So uh, next off, are I gonna take you over to the basin and we gonna see how I keep my crayfish in there. Okay, so here we are. In front of myself you can see the basins that I set up for keeping the crayfish. Uh, right now I do have this mesh around over it, as well. they do like to escape. They're quite curious creatures. And in night I even could put uh, that mat over here. It does have a filtration system, which is running very quiet, which is nice. And um, I do also have air bubbles, so uh, that's quite good. And now if you look into here, you can see a bit of an issue. We do have uh, the glare of the sun shining back at us. That was a fish shrimping. Because I do have one fish left in here, um, and if you look over here, we do have a crayfish that currently is shutting out on the filtration system. Um, that's not a sign of it feeling unwell, or so it is just due to the fact that he's a bit curious and looking outside of the water right now. Uh, this one is. Uh, one I caught two days ago or so and um, yeah so that's the system that I set up and I gonna remove the mesh now so we can have a more detailed look at it. So here we are I removed um, the cover and also turned on the lights and as I'm getting closer the effect of the glare should reduce some but it's still pretty apparent um, looking with naked eye, I can see the ground of the water, so that's not as bad as you may think. It may look a bit milky right now, uh, but that's mainly due to the fact that I installed uh, the small case for the crayfish chest uh, yesterday, and they may have been digging in there a bit, and actually can't see me right now anymore, but well, here we go. Uh, that's one crayfish sitting there, and he's quite relaxed. He's not scared of me, uh, which is good. And we can see that another one is over there. Uh, he was just uh, climbing up the light. You can see it over there. The claw against the light, so that's another one. One may be sitting inside of the uh, small cavities that I set up. Yeah, he's climbing up on the light. Might be coming to the surface soon. Um, and the water quality actually is not bad. Um, as I said before, 350 liters of water in here. Um, 400 liters would be roughly 100 gallons. So. Um, that's the story behind that, and um, yeah, uh, I do have 25 kilograms of gravel on the bottom, covered with 25 kilograms of sand, and I do see a second one climbing around there. It's getting evening, so they are getting more active. You can possibly make it out on the video there. He's climbing up as well. They already caught a few flowers that I was planting in here. Um, which is normal as well. It's a natural behavior. They so like doing that. And yeah, so uh, that's the crayfish basin. And I'm gonna see if I can get some of them out of here to show you a bit better. Uh, and I also do have plans on uh, getting a small camera in here. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but. Um, I will try to get some out of here for you, and I also do have plans to get a camera inside here, but I'm not sure yet how i gonna do that. But well, yeah, it's an idea, and we're gonna see how that turns out. Okay, so essentially here we got two of them, 
Uh, sorry about the changing light conditions. Can't have that. Uh, this one has lost the one front claws uh, entirely, and on this one, you can see he still has them. And if you look at his defensive behavior, I'm gonna hold him like this against the light. Uh, you can make out the distinctive white color of the joint of the claw, the red color of uh, the backside, and if they hold it up like that, uh, it is clearly a sign of them warning them. <laughs> and the other one is essentially just tried to climb out of the bucket, so I had to give him a slight little push back inside. But yeah, that's the front of him. Uh, his claw in the front side is pretty impressive and uh, if you look at them uh, you can tell that this one is a male animal he has uh, distinctive gonopodes uh, so if you look at the main legs they have little claws as well not only the main claw and if you look at the back side you can see our swimming legs and for male animals the first two swimming legs have um, turned into the male reproductive organs that are called gonopods and for females they are called conopros so this is a nice animal we're gonna get the other one quick put this one back inside here and see that we can get this one to turn around So he turned around, they're quite active, which is a good indicator for being a good water quality actually. And yeah, being that they are so active is a good indicator for water quality. And this one is actually a male one as well. He tried to get away, but I'm having a tight grip on him. And as you can see, he lost both front claws. I don't know why. It must have happened recently because the wound is still fresh. Uh, but I already caught him this way. I can tell you by showing you a picture of our, him right after the catch. But this is quite a big one and you see how active they are. Um, if the water quality in my basin was not okay, they would uh, become tired and inactive quick. And yeah, they are not inactive at all. So that's a good sign for me that my water quality is correct. And we're gonna see, uh, I don't know if I find another one. I'm gonna have to check. He may be in here. There should be another one in here, but I don't see them, see him right now or her right now. I'm not even sure if it was a female or male. Uh, but yeah, so um, that's the basin that I set up and I keep them in here for the time being that I, um, I am not using them for producing yummy food. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, as you can see, it's the next day, and I did not get to our film an outro to my video uh, yesterday. Usually, I wanted to go with you to the Greyfish Basin in nighttime and uh, switch on the illumination, but uh, I did not get to that. So uh, this is just a quick one. I'm again on the way to my trip, so. Yeah, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, leave a like, and if you have any questions or so, leave a comment. Uh, that would be very appreciated. Thank you.